Special Operations. Covert Ops. Espionage. The Team House. With your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Clark. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 238 of the Team House. I'm Jack Murphy here with David Park. D back there pressing buttons. And our guest on tonight's show is Pasha Munro. He is a veteran of the SBS, the British Special Boat Service. And we're really pleased to have him on the show tonight. Uh, thank you so much for being flexible with us and joining us at the late hour uh, in your time zone, Pasha. We appreciate it. Fantastic. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> So man, we'll, we'll we'll jump right into it uh, if it's cool with you, and uh, I, I'd love to start, you know, with it, you know your origin story and sort of your upbringing and and how that path took you towards the British military. So um, obviously, well, I'm I'm 50 years old, so 19 early 1970s, and that was pretty much the time in Northern England when. Um, the eastern kind kind of people started to come over to do industrial work so that was my my, my real father so met a local lady and yes i i um, i came out and pretty much in in obviously i didn't know at the time i was one of the um new kind of babies from from that era if you see what i mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your, your your father was south asian Yes, yeah, yeah. So he came to the Stun Thorpe's in it's in it's industrial. So that's what he came over here to do, and I guess. Um and and, and and quite a lot of them came over from to to the north of England to to, to get some work. And, and so young young Pasha comes about and, and where where are you living? What's your, your uh family life like? So um what I can remember, um, so I was probably five years old. My first record, uh, well, there's a few little memories, but the big memory, what what that, what I actually um, concluded a couple of years ago and, and was backed up, that my mother and father kind of separated. Mm -hmm. And it was, he he wanted to take me away with him. He put me in the back of his boot and drove me to Heathrow. And his intentions was to take me back to his homeland, as, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> thankfully, when we actually got to Heathrow, I don't know, I don't really know how, but the, the the police got him and he was on his way, and I was sent back to mum. And that was that was the last time I actually saw him. Wow. Really. Yeah. So I I always have a joke about it you know if he actually got me over there i could have been on the wrong side <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> I, I, I could have been on my flip-flops chasing you guys <laughs> I mean, you, you were destined for greatness either way <laughs> absolutely I, you know it, it's bizarre you know it, it's, a, it's a funny thing but realistically there's something in in the blood that i was going to be where out my direction was going to go anyway right it didn't really matter what country i was going to be in right I, I was i think i was deemed to to go down that path anyway w were you drawn to the military at a young age were you a scrapper were you an introvert like what what were you like as a kid S so yeah again because i because because i was half cast asian the, the and it to, to grow up in 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 that era I, I was I was kind of bullied a bit because I, I was small and it was different so yeah I was kind of I was kind of bullied but it didn't really matter because I like to hang around with the cool guys right um and and they kind of looked after me a little bit and and that's how that's pretty much how, how this my schooling went um <clears throat> but I wasn't very a academic um I uh I was good at sports, so I was always running around trying to play football. Enjoyed it, um, but no, no, I, I, I wasn't ac academical. But the reason I did enjoy school was the 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 friendship, the the, the getting the people, the the, the team, the, the tribe, as it as it were. Well, I didn't know it it, it was the tribe then. You just right. you just get drawn into you, you get drawn into it, and 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 you kind of want to be with your buddies. Yeah. 
Yeah. So your buddies hazed you, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like, and then, uh, like, what were they like? Did you run with the rough crowd? Was like, what was the sort of neighborhood and the environment like in in those the seventies and eighties? Like growing up, uh, well, well where, we was, we was just on the streets all night, running yeah. around, causing havoc. You know, being being little demons, as it were. You know, causing <laughs> it was causing trouble, but it wasn't particularly. It wasn't nasty. Not not like nowadays. The trouble the kids are getting onto nowadays, right. where you're hurting people, right. things like that. Yeah, it's trouble like knocking on doors and running and running right, through right, backyards right, right. and getting chased and things, you know. Right. Right. And, and and it's kind of obviously it's it's you think it's fun, but you are pissing people off, but you're not <laughs> yeah. hurting anybody. But it's or still you're fun. Da- you're not potentially damaging uh, yeah. damaging anything. Right. Or making people pay for things, you know. Right. So when did you first start thinking about the military? Well, I was twelve and. A couple of my friends started going to the cadets so i was like all right i'm i'm, I'm gonna have a go at that so we went to the cadets but some of my friends was in the marine cadets and some of them was in the, the sea cadets so i think at the time there was more people in the sea cadets so i went into the sea cadets which i, I it was it was it was pretty cool i mean we were still in the marine it was still in the same unit you could still see the marine cadets but i enjoyed well, where I live isn't next to any water. So whenever we used to do the boating part, we had to go down to a canal. <laughs> so we'd go down to the canal, you know, um, there'd be a little boat where we'd be doing the pulling and I'd be the coxswain because, I'm, yet again, I'm, I was the smallest guy and I'm loving it. I'm just sitting watching everyone blowing out their asses, <laughs> you know, and I'm just steering the thing and telling them to hurry up. Yeah. So I I, I I enjoyed being in the water and doing a doing a bit of and I enjoyed the canoeing as well. Um, I was kind of like a district champion, as it were, at my age on on the canoeing. So yeah, it it, it was really it was really fun, and I yeah I enjoyed it. and and being away at the weekends, you know, hanging around with the guys, eating rubbish food, as it were. And at night, causing aggro hassle with the, with the instructor, like jumping in the water, you know, just just being boys at the end of the day, yeah. and getting away from getting away from the family life. And I think the society today, it doesn't seem to do that anymore. It's, everyone's in the house. Everyone's in yeah on the ex, on 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 the, on the export because etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think our generation, it's completely different. You have to you could be out all night having fun. No one was kind of worried, right? As long as you was in. As long as you was in for your meal, because it was expensive to you know to eat then. As long as right. you ate that and and you went out again and you came back in when when the lights were going on the school light, uh, sorry the, the the street lights, every everyone was fine. Yeah. So what was because we had uh, Robin on last week, and I don't know if it was the cadets because he went into a school program. That was like right. like the last few years of school. Is that what the cadets was, or was that more like an ROTC program that you were in? That that's the sideline. It's like it's 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 it's, it's like like the scouts kind of thing. Okay, it's just yeah, it it it, it does re- it does prepare you because it gives you an insight of what 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 is out there, mm-hmm. um, and they do a kind of syllabus to to go round to go through that as well. So. It does. It does align you if you want to go down that direction. However, after a couple of years being in the sea cadets, I saw the guys in the marine cadets, and I, I quite liked that as well. So I asked the commanding officer at the time, and he's like, "No, we're keeping you. You're staying in the sea cadets." So I actually stayed in there till fifteen, sixteen years old. Uh huh. So, so your heart though, kind of at that time, like you were happy being a coxswain on on a on a champion boat but you yeah. also wanted to go rough it with the marines yeah 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 because I, I i quite liked them you know in the bushes you know camming themselves up and walking around with these rifles because they look pretty hard you know yeah <laughs> and yeah. and they was doing well it, I, I, it sounds a bit weird they was doing a bit more manly things yeah right because we had girls in our bit in the sea cadets we wasn't as robust as potentially the marine guys they was out you know, jumping off bridges into the water. We weren't jumping off the bridges. We might be just jumping in, you know right. what I mean? <laughs> right. Walking down the bank into the water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how uh, how did you end up in the military then? Uh, and why didn't you go into the Marines? Oh, so 
coming up to my 16th birthday, obviously the last year within within the school, I actually applied to go into the Royal Navy. Quite an, a, and I did it more than, oh, sorry, earlier than everybody else. So I actually wanted to do it. I wanted to kind of get in there first. So I went to my local careers office, um, said I wanted to join the Navy. And I remember the guy's name is a chief petty officer, BB. That was his name. And it, it just says to me, no, come back in six months. And I, and he didn't actually give me a reason. So I was, you know, obviously upset and went away. And then as I was leaving, I saw that the um i saw a guy come in to do the uh, to um do his uh, to ask about the marine uh, sorry the, the royal marines and then he started doing some pull ups cuz you had to do i don't know 15 pull ups in front of him just to show him he was kind of um fit enough and then i saw a poster i thought right i, I think i'm going to go for the marines here because you've not given me a good enough reason why i don't want you're not wanting me to go in the navy i want to go for the marines so i went away and I, and I thought about it, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to do this." But I didn't. I didn't actually know what I was getting. I know it was going to be a lot tougher, um, but I didn't. I didn't know the actual field craft part of it. So, all, all, all what I did for the first couple of years, I, I, I had a break. Then I, I didn't actually join up till I was nineteen. So in the in in the first couple of years after leaving school, I was just, I got a proper job, nine to five kind of thing, but. I'd get up in the morning, do a five, six, seven, eight mile run before work, come back after work and then do me press ups, me sit ups and think of me pull ups. And I did that all the time and, and and trying to learn. Oh, sorry, not not to learn. I knew I'd, I'd partic- I I may have a problem because I was little. I was always kind of petite and obviously you don't get any. It's it's you. you your size and your weight doesn't matter. You're still going to carry whatever you're going to get, right. whatever you're going to get. So my idea was I was going to buy the biggest Bergen and put everything in it and just walk. And that's what I did. I mean, the, the, I was walking around streets like a nutter with, with, <laughs> with a big Bergen on my back, which is probably bigger than me. And just to try and try and make my body absorb the pain and, and get used to it, really. And, yeah. and I did that for quite some time because I knew, yeah, it'd be too... Well, it'd be tough. I, I want to ask, you know, your height and weight, but I know you're going to give us your weight in stone and your height in meters, and none of us are going to know what that means. Oh, I've got Google up. You got Google up? Yeah. All right, all right, well, let's hear well, it, Pasha. Well, I, I am actually now 72 kilos, but when I joined, I was 52. Uh, so you're 158 now, and when you joined, uh, you're 114. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, too bad they didn't need tunnel rats. Like, I mean, that's <laughs> no, but like in Vietnam, like you know, yeah, the tough job. But, yeah, so so you put you put you had to put some weight on when you got into the military. Well, my metabolism doesn't. It just goes off. The, it it doesn't let me. It doesn't let. And I'm and I'm fifty now, and I and I still flipping. It looks like I'm. I've got you know. I've been snorting something sometimes because I, I, there's still. It's still there. It's not. It's, it's slowed down a bit. But if I have a can of coke now, I, that's me. I'm. I'm. I'll be flipping, bouncing around. You, so, you're 50 and you still can't put on weight. You know that's. You know that's quite a humble brag at this point, right? <laughs> it, 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 it is. But um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm it, just... it, yeah. It, 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 at this age, to be lean, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was mm. great. Uh, and then, so what? Like, what was your plan? Were you? Were you set on the Marines? Were you thinking about the Navy? Yeah. So once once the Navy's door was shut, I wasn't going back. So then I was right. I'm going. I'm going in the Marines. Okay. I, I, I'm going to make it it work. But before the reason why it took me a bit longer from age sixteen to nineteen was during my upbringing as well. My mother, every, bless her soul, she's not here now. But when she met a guy she'd change our names, <laughs> so our surnames. So I'd, some some bizarre reasons. So I had a few steps of names, if you if you see what I mean. My name had changed a few times, but she it wasn't legal. So uh, she's uh-huh. just kind kind of changed it. So when I went to join up, there's like that, you're not actually, that's not actually your name. You've you got to prove that it's your name. So I had to go through the system to 
go through them steps to make sure, well, to make it legal. So yeah. it, it took me quite some time, really. So then you did go, you, I didn't know you could yes. go to the SPS from the Marines. So no, no. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I went in the Royal Marines first. So, okay. So, okay. So let's talk about that. Yeah. What was yeah, that yeah. like for you? So I, I joined when I was 19 and yes, the, it, it was a kick in the, kick in, kick in the balls. It was really. a time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, the fitness, absolutely fine. The, 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 you know, the, the administration, absolutely fine. But the field stuff, that's what I, that's what, that was a shock to me. I mean, in the first few weeks, you're in the field under your ponchos doing, trying to sort yourself out. And, and, and that, that, that was a complete shock to me. Um, and I, cause I didn't really, I didn't prepare myself at all on that part. My mind was mostly get your body, get your body, get, get your fitness. Cause right. That's 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 what it says. You, you've got to be, you know, really fit to to be quote a Royal Marine at the time. Oh, well, still really. So yeah, when I joined, um, that 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 was a real struggle for me. And remembering now, what I used to do is when obviously the instructor showed you something, you you meant to obviously get a grips of it. But I I wouldn't learn that as quick as other people so i'd be watching the other guys do it and then learn from them rather than the instructor so i was always a step behind mm -hmm. but i never i never kind of realized that at the time for a long time you know for because you don't you you've just got your your head on what you're comfortable with and what you can actually get away with without anyone knowing right right <laughs> right what, um, how long is the Royal Marine boot camp? And when you went in, did did you enlist with a job in mind? No. So when 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 I just wanted to be a Royal Marine, uh -huh. um, gen, general general duties, running up the line, shooting. That 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 was it. Um, I, I was nineteen at the time. Um, and on 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 the aspects of when I was growing up. It was something that I needed to do because if I stayed in my home in my hometown, I would probably got in the trouble. Uh -huh. um, I was that kind of guy. I was I was hyper, and if someone told me to, you know, let's go and do something that's not really against, you know, it's it's against the law if you do that kind of thing. But it's fun, and we'll kind of leg it and get out of it. I, I'd probably do that and get in the shit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, yeah. And and being in a small town, everyone kind of knows you anyway, so you're not. <laughs> really hiding or you're not going to get away with it yeah and the uh i believe the royal marines are sort of famous for having the longest infantry basic training in the world like it's quite quite hardcore it was 30 weeks at the time and i think it's gone up to 30 34 weeks now wow. yeah yes yeah, 30, 30 weeks yeah so i was quite lucky i i joined in in the december and the first two weeks you kind of in a big block where you're just learning how to iron get thrown in the mud and make sure you your uniform is ready by the, the next morning with one washer kind of thing so going through that process for two weeks i was quite lucky that i had two weeks cr christmas leave straight away so i had quite a good break um and then obviously went back af af after af after christmas leave straight back into it which in in the UK in it down south the weather is absolutely freezing wet so you're not you're not battling what the what the syllabus is you're battling the actual elements as well right and uh, I mean at some point they must figure out like I, I don't know what the term is in the British military in the United States we call it like a military occupational specialty or like what your job is like were you um, throw it like did it eventually become an infantryman, a mortarman, a commo guy, medic. Like, wh wh when did that come about for you? So I, I passed passed my training, and just before just before the end of it, it was, I think at the at the certain times when people are um, passing the, the um, training, I'm, I'm guessing at them particular times within the Marines, there's there's downfalls of particular specialities mm. or trades, and 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 it was mortars. So I went and uh, I went to be a mortarman straight into a commando unit, um, which yet again was completely um, a kick in the balls because mm. in the Marines you have to 
done some quite some time to be in mortars. It wasn't you shouldn't ever go from training to mortars because it's kind of an old an old sweat kind of thing. You've done time in the unit first. So I <laughs> I turns up and that's my first job. So people in the troop was like, what are you doing here kind of thing? You're a new boy. And how did you respond to that? I mean, I was still small, so I had to shut up and take it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and everyone was everyone's bigger than me anyway. So, and, and and I was it was my first commando unit, and that that's what I'd just done for thirty odd week, thirty odd weeks to prepare myself for. So it was just you just take it and do whatever they sell me to do, and, and and go and go to the shops for them, go and do whatever they want me to do. Just 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 let me in <laughs> that's pretty cool so uh how, how long did you spend in the royal marines so i did 14 years i was a i was oh, a mortarman wow. for i think about 12 uh, no just just over 10 years uh, i was a mortar fire controller in at the end up, up the front you know with the company commanders you know bringing bringing down the uh, indirect fire and then um <clears throat> i got in trouble a few times uh, drinking and I was uh, before that I got um, because yeah again I'm small. There's not many small people in the unit, so I was kind of aimed to do some boxing, <laughs> so to to help the unit. So I was I did quite a bit of boxing, and then I became a unit champion within my weight because realistically there's not many people at my weight anyway. So it wasn't that it wasn't <laughs> that bad. I didn't have that many bouts. <laughs> And then I went down to the Marines and then the Royal Navy. And then I, I won the Royal Navy. So I, at the time I had my little uh, claim to fame. I had the fastest hands in the Royal Navy. So I was quite chuffed with that. And then I, they actually kept me on the Royal Navy team for a year. So I was actually a professional sportsman, as it were, because I was doing three three fit, uh, fitness sessions a day and yeah. you know getting the, best, getting the best food. And I did that for a year. That's awesome. And the and the odd fight now and then, you know yeah. I mean? And it wasn't that regular because yet again, I was I was only between fifty seven and uh, sixty kilos. Yeah. So there's there's not that many people, and I, and I I got quite ranked because you know, realistically, because I, there's not that many people at that level. Sorry, at that weight. And I, I mean, I'm I'm assuming all of this is sort of before nine eleven and all of the wars and everything. Yes, it was um, the nineties. Yeah. So yeah. so you uh you must have gotten like some pretty cool like training exercises too, going to like Central America or, or Southeast Asia. Or... Oh yeah, I went to Belize for six months. That's awesome. That 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 was cool. I mean, that was one of my first um, deployments, as it were. It was a deployment at the time. I don't understand why it. We never got a medal for it, but the the, the Guatemalans was coming over and shooting and nicking all uh, nicking all the cows or whatever, the, the cattle and stuff like that. So he was actually patrolling, looking for them. Um, not that I ever got in any contact out there, but it was it was good fun. And and that jungle is pretty pretty cool. Yeah, if I recall correctly, the the flag, like the official map of of Guatemala, includes the country of Belize in it. So it <laughs> yeah, ca yeah. That causes a little bit of tension there. <laughs> Absolutely, but 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 it, but it was great. I did six months, and then obviously you get your R and R in there. So you're off to Honduras, you're off to Cancun. You, yeah, you're having some pretty. There's some cool places in that area. Yeah, yeah, and at that age as well. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, did, did you guys also did the Royal Marines also do uh, patrols in Northern Ireland? Yes, I did. I did three. So I went there three times for three six month tours. Um, I didn't actually get in any kind of fire contacts out there. It was kind of, it wasn't dying down, but it was, it was dirty for the fact it was more of, um, IEDs, bombs, et cetera, et cetera. It wasn't uh -huh. actual, yeah, contacts. We, we never got in a, a firefight as it were. It was just a matter of trying to walk around and not be blown up. <clears throat> yeah. Do you want to? Uh... Yeah, uh, Pacha, uh, please forgive us real quick. We just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, uh, the AARP uh, Veteran Report. That's our friend Toby Harden, um, is the editor there. It's a free twice monthly email newsletter that salutes military service and provides a mixture of inspirational uh, human stories and practical informa information for vets. You can subscribe to AARP Veteran Report. 
by going to aarp.org slash vet report. It's free. The newsletter comes to your inbox. They don't spam you. It's just good information. They're good stories. They have uh, articles like My Hero, which is about uh, veterans, you know, uh, uh, that people admire then and now, which are like retrospectives and cool stories about veterans back in the day and what they're doing in their life. It's positive, upbeat vibe. It's a positive, upbeat, upbeat vibe. Sorry. And there are no politics in it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, and it's free. You go. You won't get spammed. It's well curated. It's great, and you don't even have to be a member of AARP to sign up. So if if you're a young kid like Jack and haven't and haven't hit that uh, that cutoff yet, um, Jack's subscribed, and he's not even a member. He could be a member. I think. I think, I, I think anybody can be a member. I think anybody can yeah. be a member. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So check out uh, our friends because uh, Justin Sapp has written for him mm -hmm. also. Check out our friends at. AARP.org slash vet report and subscribe to AARP Veteran Report. Thanks. So, Pasha, I mean, you had a, a really good run in the Royal Marines. Um, talk to us about sort of like when the idea of trying out for the SBS like comes into your mind. Like, where, where, where does that come from? It was quite early in, in the 90s <clears throat> because. I was in mortar troop and I was hyperactive, you know, and the mortars are kind of an old, older guys. So I'm obviously a young guy and, and, and bouncing around and that. And, and they're saying to me, you know, I think you could go down that direction, etc. you know, go down the SBS route. And I didn't have a clue really what, what it was all about. I just knew it was special forces. Um, and then in 1997, I actually went to do the selection. Um, unfortunately, I, I failed. I wasn't good enough. And putting it down, what I put it down to was, I wasn't good. You, you did four weeks on, 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 on the mountains, as it, as it were, on the hills. And I couldn't, a lot of people turn up on day one a, a little bit overweight because you, you're going to lose that kind of weight throughout and then right. try and peak at the end so you, you get in on all the timings but i'm i'm i can't put weight on anyway right. I, I, it's it's not a it's not a a reason for me to say I'm, i was failing but once i was getting towards the test at the end right. i was like that right and um and 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 to be honest, hands up, I, I my my navigation at that time wasn't as good as it should have been. Um, so that and the, and and the uh, the energy and uh, it it didn't it didn't work. And 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 I was absolutely good because I I did for a few years, you know, plan that that was the route. So I came back back to the unit, and then the selection process is twice a year. I went back when the next opportunity was. And I did exactly the same, absolutely, and and I failed it. So, in in the UK, you only get two chances. Yeah, and uh, and that was me. That and that's why I kind of started to get into trouble because I started to drink. I, a couple of years previously, I was a boxing champion, so drinking and boxing really didn't go well, and 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 a bit of an attitude. So, I ended up going to the military prison a few times. Just, to, just to. Punch get it out of my system as it as, as you know and, and, I, and I, I, I actually think looking back i'm not saying everyone should do that kind of route but um i think it made me a stronger person to be honest yeah yeah you know all these particular little failures and and and, and hands up i've done quite a lot of little failures or big failures as it were and but i've always wanted to go to the position and I've always got to them positions, and if it's like, and I always call it a pinball, and I'm I'm I'm, mm. I'm all over the plumbing joint, but I know where I want to be, and I'll get it get there. And then obviously the frustrating bit is you look at the, someone opposite to you, and they're just rolling straight up the line, right? And and, and they are they're always getting. It. But I think I I think it's a you get a better person, I, you know, and that's just from me. Obviously, I've been through that. I, I can't. I can't say it for for the person who's walked straight up the straight up the middle of the smoke. Right. But I think I've got more experience and mm. and more, um, yeah, more experience and and 
and I've had failure. So I, I, I think it, it's made me a better person. Oh, yeah, a better person. So when, when you were going, uh, first off, what was the British military like at that point in time where if you went to prison or you had like judicial punishments, obviously it didn't ruin your career because you, you still had an amazing career after that. So were those types of things just seen as, well, you did your time now put your head, yeah. you know, screw your head back on yeah. and get back out there. Yeah. I mean, the first, the, the first time I came back out and kind of did it again. So I went back and, 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 and did phase two as it were. And then <laughs> I thought, I thought I was going to leave them because I, I was kind of, in the roller coaster of getting in the shit, and 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 it was a it was a bit of a cloud. I didn't I, I didn't have a direction. I I just I was just upset. Obviously, I failed of of, of the opportunity of being SF, um, yeah. and I didn't I didn't think there's any there was any point of me staying in the military to be honest. Yeah, and that's and and I took it out on every everyone and myself, and I didn't I, I didn't think there was another opportunity. And how long were these stints? Were they like weekenders or were you doing hard time? No. So one was, I mean, the first one was 21 days and the second one was 27 days. So it wasn't, it wasn't particular, but, right. but, the, but before to get to that position, you, you're like, you're in the shit for six months and waiting for that, waiting for that kind of trial to go, go to right. jail. So you've wasted quite a lot of time mm. and before that. So before one of, my, my second um, incident, I was like working in the officer's mess as like a barman. So I wasn't even a soldier. I was just like a slave. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, just because I was in the shit and they wanted to look, they wanted to see, they just, I don't know if they wanted to just humiliate me or something. They just didn't want me on with the rest of the guys because I was a, I was being a dick, I guess. Yeah. You know, Pash, I'm curious because, you know, if we roll back to your time in the mortars real quick. Like you go in, you're 57 kilos, nine stones, uh, 125 pounds, and somebody sent you to the mortars. Did you piss somebody off? But uh, thinking about it, when I first got there, mate, I I did straight went, went straight into an exercise. I was uh, my unit was in Scotland, but we went on the Scottish mountains. Yeah, and they gave me a barrel. So my first thing was a barrel, a, nine, a 81 millimeter barrel, which is nearly the size of me. You know, I didn't even know how to strap it to my Bergen. People had to like put it on and strap it to me. And then I had to get two people inside me to put it on me because I couldn't even lift it anyway. Yeah, yeah it, just for people who, uh, you know, our civilians might not know, like infantry generally carries a lot of shit when they go out to the field. If you're on a mortar team, you're carrying all your shit that everybody else is carrying. And you got the mortar, the barrel, the barrel, the base plate, and all the ammunition. So nobody's getting off easy. Yeah. In addition to all mm. your other stuff. Yeah, being in mortars is rough. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I'm really curious about the, the punishment because I, I don't know if the military was like that. I was I was a model student uh, when I said, no, I just never got caught. But, <laughs> but I, I know that it's, it's a lot more strict now here. I don't know if it is there. But, you know... So at no point you were ever really at risk of getting kicked out for your infractions. It's just like, go do your time. Only because my, it, I was just fighting. It wasn't, it wasn't o over the top fighting. It was just being a dick on the pit, uh, bit drinking. It, right, it wasn't, okay. I wasn't like knifing, glassing. It, it was yeah, just right. a quick f fight or just punch, punch just, ups at the bar. Yeah. Well, I haven't yeah that, that's, that, that's all it was. It wasn't, I'm not, I'm not saying that's all it was, but it wasn't anything, you know, grievous or, or I wasn't using anything. And, yeah. and, and that was it. That was cut then. The, the fight had finished and yeah. then, you know, you're off home and or you, you're going to get a takeaway together. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I haven't heard the term glassing for years. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad glassing. I'm not like rolling bars and rolling out in bars anymore. <laughs> so, um, so, I yeah. mean, this is, so you had this interesting experience, I mean, of in and out of military prison a few times and then selection a few times. Well, and twice you were at your limit. Right. As, right. As far as you knew. Yeah. 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 So, so how, so, how did this come about? So after the, the second um, prison time, I, I was like, right, I actually want to stay now. I need to, I need to book my ideas up. Um, and then I went to Northern Ireland. That was my, my last Northern Ireland trip. And 
I'd already I'd already done two, and it was quite boring. All we was doing is walking around, making sure everything was okay. There, there was no there was no kind of soldier in, as it were. It was just you're just policing more, right, more, right, more right. really. And I thought to myself, how can I actually get out of this? And uh, and I put in for the mountain leaders, the Royal Marines mountain leaders. <clears throat> so I went off and did that. Uh, I left Ireland, had a c- couple of weeks off, and then I went and did that. In which that is probably what that that was in my mind harder than special forces selection. So that's that was you start in um, August and you finish in March. Wow. So you, and, and that's that's like an advanced like mountain field craft. I take it. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of mountain mountain climbing, as it were, mm, and yeah. um, f- finishing off with like. A, you're on the run for 10 days in on an island and then from january to uh, march you're in norway doing cold weather um <clears throat> survival techniques um skiing obviously uh, and maneuvers so you you was then the 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 the, um, the instructor when we went to norway to keep because the royal marines have the the cold weather element to to look after the northern flank as it were from the russians coming down mm-hmm. so <clears throat> I, but one of the jobs would be obviously to take the guys out there to to make sure they can sustain themselves and and work in them environments up to minus thirty potentially. So does the mountain leader course does it put you in a special unit like a mountain unit or do you go back to your to your unit and you're the subject matter expert? At the time, so your first job would be back to your unit to to be in the recon. As as okay. it were, to, or or go into one of the com- the companies to look after or to advise the company commander if if they're on um, mountainous operations on how to get there how you know what equipment etc cetera, etc cetera. get the troops to a from A to B in mountainous uh, areas but after that then you you would go to um, a particular brigade kind of where all the MLs would go to so they'd be up front before. The Royal Marines turned up and they'd, they'd secure everything and 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 do 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 the do the recce the recon for uh-huh. the Royal Marines as it were. And what were your you know because you mentioned like during your um, during your selections you know you, you look I mean nutrition wasn't the same back then like you know obviously you couldn't feed yourself enough carbohydrates you were you know running out of that stuff. Did uh, was there a different like sort of schedule for eating? Did you guys have like the high calorie winter rations? Yeah, that helped you yes. sustain. Yeah, you, and you stuff have like all that? the high stuff, you, and, yeah. and you just completely get given every all all the kind of food. There's there's there's, there's no holding back on that because especially in, in the Norway, you on on our final exercise, I think it was ten days, and we covered something like 180 kilo kilometers. Wow! <laughs> so the you, you're carrying all that during the day. You're sleeping during the day, up, up all night, skiing to wherever, probably take out a position and then you're on the run, you know. So, yeah, it's quite it's quite tough. And in, in them environments, you, you can't, you, well, you're burning calories constantly and it's not as if you've got one flask to get you through from the, the beginning of the, 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 the ski to the end because it's not as if you can fill, fill up, get any water or anything. So that that's it until you can bivvy up for the rest of the day. So 180 kilometers is 111 miles. And how many days did you have? We'd have about 10 days on that. Yes. Yeah. In, in, in a mountain environment, yeah. a, mi- a mile right. isn't a mile. Right, right, right. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you're not sleeping well. Like you're not. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and, and obviously during we did it during the night and then during the day, you, you've you got to do your own sentries because you, right, right, you're, right. Playing the ta- you're playing the tactical. People are potentially following you up and following your skis and uh, your, your marks, etc. So you're not really relaxing. But when you are you are in that tent, you you you're, it's your, your husbandry. You've got to eat yeah. like hell, yeah, and and try and get as much rest as you can and and, and keep warm. <laughs> yeah. Um, do they focus a lot on on tactics in that school, or was it mostly the technical expertise to operate in that kind of environment? It was mostly uh, mostly the technical because you should have a, a pretty good idea of your tactics anyway by then. I mean, mm-hmm. there was a bit of smoothing over and, and a few different options to be taught, but it was mostly how you get from A to B in this environment um, <clears throat> with all that kit to IE, 
look at a look at a target or take a target down or or prepare the rest of the world to come and flip and smash it. Yeah, that's wild. So how did how did the SBS come back into the picture after? Like yeah, a, 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 seemingly this door has kind of been shut to you. Yeah, absolutely. So I I went back to my unit as as the mountain leader, and I did about a year. And I was I was promoted to to a sergeant, and I was enjoying it. But I was kind of more of an instructor, and I was more looking after everybody, or making, you know, just 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 looking after. It wasn't I, I wasn't getting any benefit. Well, I was, but I wasn't I wasn't getting the soldiering out of it. Right, and, you and doing I kind what of you wanted to I, do right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's what I that's what I wanted. That's what I was urging right. back. So completely, um, necky. I I. I wrote to the selection, um, the SF selection um, commanding officer, as it were, and I said, "Look, I'm a I'm a Royal Marines Mountain leader. I did selection X amount of years ago. Please, could you give me another go?" And he actually said yes. Wow, that's awesome. So, yeah, and 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 that's what I tell people as well. You know, sometimes when when guys say, "Oh, my sergeant major says I can't do this or something like that," it's your career. You. It's your life. If people are saying no, you do, you go around them. You know, you might piss that you might, you might piss that one person off, right. but it's your career, right? You, you, and and if you want that drive, and and if you want it, you will get it. Yeah. Is the SAS and the SBS do they run the same selection? Y yeah. So it's completely the same. Um, oh wow. Okay, I didn't know that. So you're at the, yeah, so, the Brecken Beacons and all of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. so it's it's exactly the same. When when the um, when the um, chief or oh, the, the 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 commanding officer of the selection said I could go, I actually I actually had to write back to him and say, oh, by the way, I'm too I'm too old because I was 33, and the cutoff was 32. Okay, and he he got back to me and said, you necky little shit, you're not the grey man now, so I know who you are. You, <laughs> you, you know you. you, you You've got to do that. You're having no more. This is it. So that all right, all right. So I turned up on day one thinking, oh shit, everyone's look. They're not looking at me. I'm thinking, you actually know who I am. I'm meant to be the grey man at the back hiding, so you right. don't you don't know my name kind of thing. But they did. But yeah, it, it was fine. <laughs> was there anything you did differently to to train up for this particular selection? Yes, th this this one. <clears throat> I didn't really do any fitness beforehand. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I was like, it's in my mind. I, I I know what I need to do, and I know from experience, if you turn up fit, you're not going to get to the end in a in a good state. Yeah, and and that's what I did before Christmas because I I started in in the January before the Christmas. I I just ate as much as I could. Yeah and did no no fitness and just relaxed and 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 it was it put me in a in a great position that i i just i was a lot better i was a lot better focused my, my, my navigation was better because I, I did the royal marines mountain leader course which right. that 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 was a massive um help and i knew how my body worked i think a lot of these kind of courses you need to know what your body is all about because right. if it might be in your mind but your body your body takes over your body's got to get you through it so you need to understand what your body can take and what your weak what you what your personal weak points are and my my mind was on the first 10 years prior was don't turn up <coughs> fit eager hyper you need to be a bit of a, a slog when you first turn up. So at the end you, you're peaking and you're getting in the times and you're in good order at the end of it. Yeah. We, uh, we had, we've talked about this before on the show and we had, uh, David Walton on the show, yeah. uh, to, to, cause he is kind of right. He, he has this guide for helping people prepare for special forces selection here. And one of the things we've talked about is a lot of people over train. They hit their yeah. peak, right. they hit their physical peak right when they get to whatever selection they're going to. And then, then it's all downhill because you're not getting in yeah. shape. Like right. it's all you're downhill. Not recovering. From there. Yeah. Mm. Um, so it's like you said. Do you, did do you did you have a sense that you had overtrained for your first two, or was it just kind of more inexperience and? I think it was a bit of both. Okay. 
I think it was a bit of both. Um, and and it, it's the eagerness, eagerness to, to, uh, to want to do it. And you like that. You just put the handbrake right, right, on. Right, right. right. They're, they're going to get, they're going to get you to it. Right. If you do everything they want you to, but you don't look at it that way. Right. Every, everything that they've put in place is sl- slowly building you up to get to the, to the end part. And you, you we don't we don't think that <laughs> you don't you right. don't turn up like that, do you? You want to be the best on day one, but but it, but it, it's the it's ours about face. Right, right. You need right. you need to slowly you need to build your fitness with what they're giving you, so that at the end you're in, you're ready to take on the t- the, the tests that they want you to. And, and so you're you're a little bit older and wiser, of course, by by at this point. Mm. Um, but that also puts you in the position of being the unicorn that you've, you're on your third shot and you're 33 years old, a year over the limit, a double unicorn. A a double unicorn. A unicorn <laughs> so, so, so you get to the end of selection. I mean, I, I, obviously you did pretty good on the course. Um, is there like a board at the end where they question you and, and, uh, and kind of interview you for the job? Well, well, <clears throat> You, you finish the jungle part and then you come back and that's I think a lot well a lot of people do fail on on that on that part so you don't know until you come back to the UK if you've passed mm-hmm. and we're, you're all lined up ready ready to um, be told if you passed or failed and I, and I actually went in and, and the, the 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 chief instructor said to me th- there was a guy in my team <clears throat> who who said do you do you like this guy and I goes yeah and he goes you kind of had a bit of confrontation with him because yeah, again, when you're in the jungle, you don't realise they're hiding behind the tree watching you as well. Do you right. know what I mean? Right. You, you're too you're too tired to think that, that they're actually oh they've got MVGs on in the middle of the night watching what you're up to. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I said look, there, there wasn't a problem, and it was just it, I think it was just a bit of personality. That that that's all it was. And I actually thought he was going to fail me on that, and he says, "All right, you've passed." And I think it was because. Looking back, and I think it was because I was truthful to him. You know, I didn't, what, I didn't, I didn't say anything that I tried to cover up or anything. So yeah, right. it was just we just didn't get on now and then, and you know, it's it was just a personality thing. It's all, and it's also that matter that like when people are like tired and yeah, like, hungry, it all comes out and under stress. Like you're gonna, everybody gets bitchy, you know. And the thing yeah. is, is that do you do you let that continue afterwards, or does everybody just go? I, it was, I was just pissed at in that moment. Yeah. Uh, and that, and that's very hard for some people because especially in that environment so if 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 you've potentially had a bad day and and you're bad at, back at your bivvies and you're administering yourself and feeding yourself etc if you start pondering then your your night's shit yeah you, you've got to get you've got to get rid of that that's 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 finished if you're fucked up you're fucked up yeah just take take it now, tomorrow's another day and 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 just be better tomorrow yeah. Simple as that. Just try not to fuck up again tomorrow, but but don't 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 li- sleep. Oh, lay on your hammock all night worrying because yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna wake up or or start tomorrow in a good place anyway. Yeah. So you you pass selection, and uh, I, I have two questions for you. Cool. I, I guess the the first one is, what is the SBS for some of the viewers out there who don't, who really don't know? And then the second is, what was your training like to get into the unit? So if we start at the beginning, maybe for the for the American audience that has no idea what the SBS is, if you could tell us like what, what this unit is uh, to begin with. So, so the SBS is kind. Well, it's SEAL Team Six. It's Britain's so Britain's your, SEAL unit. Yeah, it's not. I mean, the 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 the, the US have so many SEAL teams, but right. obviously the SEAL Team Six is is. The dogs, so we're we're kind of marrying on on them, and obviously the SAS is, is is the SAS. So we do exactly the same as the SAS, but we've got the maritime part as well. So for instance, if if we was um, <clears throat> going, if, if there was an operation on land, then we could do that. We're trained to do that anyway. So it's not as if the maritime takes over. Right. It, it, we have to do both. Right. So you're saying you're better than the SAS. <laughs> It's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best answer ever. <laughs> Pasha, when when you're going, uh, because SBS and SAS go to the same, it's the same course, it's special forces. Um, yeah. Do, do you know if you're going to the SBS or the SAS when you are in the selection? Or can they make changes, you know? Uh, you, can, you, you can change. Okay. You, you, you can change. In, so... 
some people some people do change th th when, when they're going through it but it's not it's not very often so, uh -huh. but you'll, you'll have your own mind which unit you want to go to anyway but I mean, they, they're not going to direct you, though. They, or, or, will they ever no, say, no, OK, no, I mean, I, I mean, some some of the DS might, you know, try and, th you know, they'll, they'll like that particular student. So they might try and egg him on to, to go into their into the their, their unit. But yeah. not really. It, it's it's up to it's up to you. It's, it's your choice. Uh, for instance, the, the essay is, I mean, for a, for a potential essay has to go to the SBS. He might not even like the water. He might not. He right. might not like that. The, that, that'd be tough for him, for him to actually do. That was going to be my next question, though, because water is a whole different animal, right? right, Wa right. Water is, honestly, Ugh. it's it's sort of one, it's like the great divider a lot of times. Um, some people just aren't comfortable in it, uh, you know, and people can be studs, perfectly fit, and everything mm -hmm. else like that. But mm -hmm. the cold, the water just takes it out of them, or maybe they're not great swimmers. For the SBS, was there any type of maritime or or diving uh, or, or water-based selection during the actual SF selection? No. I mean, the only thing you do is uh, before you go to the jungle, you'll, you'll have a swimming test but with, with, with all your kit on, just just so that if you're in the jungle, there's so much water. If you're falling in there, you're actually, it, it, they're, they're confident that you actually can get out and, and swim out. But but there's there's no different. So there's, if, there's no... I'm sorry. So yes. if, if yes. a guy is slotted for the SBS and he gets there and realizes that he gets claustrophobic in a rig or something else like that, is he welcome to go to the SAS? Yes. Yeah, okay. absolutely. It, it's the same. It's the same umbrella. That's okay. really interesting. I mean, imagine if like SEAL Team 6 and Delta Force had the same selection course and then they like branched off. Yeah. Like, there's, we, there's been like this is like barroom talk, not not official. But I mean, people have talked like what if all of our soft units had the same selection course? And then they branched off from there, right? It'd be it'd be interesting. I don't I don't know if it's the right way or the wrong. Like, is the British model the right way? And I, I don't know. But but the thing is, it's interesting because you know, like, you know, you have CQB, you have shooters, you have like the, the tactical skills. Then you have you know guys that can ruck and swim, whether they're great at both, but they can do both. Then you guys have guys that are amazing at swimming but not great at rucking. And you have guys that are great at rucking and can like haul ass, but aren't great at swimming. So it's, it's just kind of this. Yeah, weird, the the, yeah. the water the water aspect that the Marines and the Navy have, I think, is one of the big separators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, so how does that work for you then for the SBS? Is there an additional selection, or then is yeah. it just so there is? It, it, but it's not selection. It's just different courses. That's all. Once okay. they finish, they'll just go and do different courses before the actual before they go and do their job. So do you do you guys do the same sort of uh, like counterterrorism? Like, do you still yes. train with yeah. the SAS yeah. for a core part of it? Yeah. OK, so so, so, so if, if on the on the counterterrorism part, you'd go and do both units and do that to get to get well, on the, the same time, well, not the same time, but but but, but to get ready for okay. a particular um, time so they're both doing the same roles could, could you take us through the a little bit about like how that works from after you pass selection what the sbs like training pipeline is um well the, you, you you get taught how to dive and then you, you do a bit of maritime stuff so you are you, you do get you, you will get badged at the same time so you will get your, your berries etc and, and and then you're kind of in but then the SBS guys will go do them particular courses before the actual join their squadrons. And, and so you're learning, like, are, are you learning rebreathers, closed circuit systems? Uh, what, what it's are, all dive, yeah all, yeah, all the diving equipment, all the different um, sets, all the different sets, and obviously all the above water equipment as well, i.e., different kind of boats and and ways of getting in or getting out so you're already an experienced coxswain though so you're you can tell the guys <laughs> not like that i yeah. can be a viking <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> did you have any diving experience in the cadets did they since you were in the navy cadets did you guys do anything like that no but um when i was in the marines i did my paddy course so i okay i was i was, I was all right underwater um i didn't particularly when i joined the sbs i i wasn't focused on being a diver 
Um, I know it's obviously part of it, but it right. wasn't my be all and end on it. It was a a little trade within it with, within within the role, as it were. Right. It's a way to get to work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it's it's another it's another tick in the box. It's, right. it's another skill we've got. Yeah, yeah. Was there ever a time that you thought that like the SBS wasn't for you, like in the train up that the SBS wasn't for you, that you'd rather go to the SAS? <laughs> um, no, no, I, I think, I, I think it's, it's because I've done so, so long as a Marine as well. Yeah. So most people go, go down that line. I mean, it doesn't matter, but yeah, I, I felt there was, there, there was more, more of my tribe going that direction rather than going the, the other and 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 you know i mean there's there's nothing in my mind to say i like them better than that it's just i my guys will go, more of my guys are going that way right now how does that work service wise you were a royal marine but the sbs is navy the sas is army correct so how do they work the paperwork when you're when, once you've passed well, selection I'm well, I'm still kind of in the Navy. Cause the, okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Department the of the Navy. If you would have gone to the SAS, yeah, yeah. would they have, have had to switch your service or would they have just, you would have been. I'd, in... I'd go in the, yeah, I'd go okay. in the Army. Okay. It's really interesting. Yeah, it, it is. It's an interesting system and obviously it works it for works, you guys, yeah. it's right? It's a smart system. Yeah. Um, so you. Uh, yeah, and then you mentioned there's a counterterrorism portion of uh, or a direct action portion of the training that you guys did with the SAS. Uh, how, how did that go? Well, that's good because when you're doing that kind of work, you, you're still with the SAS guys. So you're, you're all doing the same kind of skills. Right. So what, if if something real happened and you was all on that line, you, could work you all know. Right. What, what drills and what each other's going to do. I mean, you might not see each other for a, for a couple of years, etc. But once you get together, you know, you know what what's going to happen, who's going to not or where that body is going to go, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's, it's a great way because you're going to end up being together at some point. And right. if you don't do them skills, don't do them drills together for, and practice them drills together, then it might things might not go right. Yeah. That's that's really interesting too. That's another interesting point. So, uh, so what was like? What was your favorite part about the training? If you had a favorite part, like was there a time when you were just like, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. This is amazing. Oh, yeah. The actual CQB. Uh, that that's. I mean, we didn't really do that in the Marines. Right. It it wasn't it. So in the Marines, you kind of obviously at a distance. You're yeah. not really the squad online. And, and being a yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time you get up there, it's just a flipping. I can see him kind of two hundred meters away. But but going through the doors or going, you know, in in compounds and you know, running around little rattles, etc. It's comp It's in your face, and 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 trying to, you know, the buzz of standing on the doorway and smashing the door down. You know, it's 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 exciting. What kind of weapon systems were you guys using generally? Well, there's there's all you you. I don't want to get you in it like in any trouble. No, no, like, no, no. Yeah, it, you do get a choice, and it's it's personal choice. Yeah, is there anything that you particularly liked? And it doesn't bother me as long as it's got a, it fires a bullet. I, I get excited about gun shoot gun good, right? <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I can't stand still. I'm, I'm doing, I'm standing on, you know, hyperactive, ready to go. You know, it, it, it's, it's bizarre. It's just, it gets you so excited, things like that. I mean, I haven't done it for a while, but I'm sure if I stood in a line now at door, I would be so excited, you know, so happy, you know, yeah. getting a little hand on your shoulder and, and, and you know, we're off. You know, the squeeze. It'd, be, it'd be great. Yeah. What you did your mountain leader course, did that qualify? I mean, I'm sure the SBS had their own recce stuff or whatever going on. Like, did that play into anything yeah, you got yeah. to do? So I, I, I did a lot of the rope work. I did all, uh, you know, I, that was my, that was my role for quite some time. Looking, yeah. af looking after that, making sure it's all, you know, serviced and et cetera, and potentially setting things up as well. Right. 
But unlike in the Marines where that was more just a supervisory role here, you were still like you had your job as an SBS yeah. like yeah. operator and then you just maintain the ropes and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, how long for selection and then training, how long was it until you got to your troop? Uh, I'm not sure if it's troops or how it's broken down. But... Yeah. 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 So, um, I don't know, probably 10, 10 months or something like that. By the time you meet the guys that you're going to, you're going to work with. Yeah. Uh, when they, and, saw... and then, and then, then it all starts again. Then you, yeah, then you're the new boy. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been in quite a long, I've been in the military quite a long time then. So be, then you're back to being a new boy, but it, it it's not, it's not the same. It's, you know, it's not, it's not the same as t turning up in, in, in a unit, et cetera. It, it, you, you, you still, you've done what you've done what they've done, but the guys around you have got more experience and knowledge and, and, and been there and done it. So even, even though there's guys that probably haven't been in the military as long, you, looking at them in awe because they've they've been on the ground and they've they've been in that little world and you don't even know i mean i was I, I did quite a long time in the marines before i went there and i thought i was quite savvy and i thought i i knew quite a lot but when i went there i'm like that oh my fucking god is this is this happening is that are you allowed to do that kind of stuff <laughs> you know it, it it you're like wow what a place you know yeah. it, 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 it's completely it was a completely different eye opener and and to see and and to be in them positions of of well of complete different um well you wouldn't think you'd be doing them kind of things yeah yeah so what year was it that you uh that you finally got your squadron or your your troop i mean uh 2006 2006 so had you deployed uh to uh afghanistan with the marines no okay no no. So there were, I mean, th so 2006, there are two wars going on. Um, I, I, how were you feeling about that? So when, when you, um, when just before you actually finish your selection process, you get an option of what squadron you're going to go for. And, and you get the, you get the brief of where they're, where, where they're all deployed and where they're going. So everyone wants to go when the when the first finish they want they want to go straight to right. a conflict so but then you've got to think about what role it is and blah 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 so yeah for for me it was quite some time before i went straight out to a role which in hindsight it was it it worked well for me because <clears throat> i got i could build up an experience before i actually w went there uh, um and got the guys to take you know you know be confident of me as well right right do doing the train ups and and everything yeah. like that yeah and when you so say you, you <clears throat> i'm sorry uh, so, so obviously with that you're, you're building the relationships up with them on on different um different roles so they're looking you're obviously you're always getting looked at right and if you're and if you're doing well then when the when the big things start coming in then they're happy. I'm not. They would be happy anyway. But it, you would be happy with someone because you've seen them at work. Now, when you say role, do you sort of? And I don't. We don't need to get into specifics. But do you sort of mean in the sense of, well, like this troop needs a breacher. This troop needs a RTO. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, you you're get, sort of picking get, what get you the, want. You, you get your different job descriptions, shall we say? Okay. Uh, and was there? Anything in particular, like, kind of flipped your switch that you're like, oh, I want to learn that or I want to do that? No, I just wanted to get out there and start doing what I've always wanted to do and get get amongst it. Yeah. So during this time frame, um, you know, started doing some deployments to Afghanistan. Are, are there any operations that kind of, like, stand out in your mind as being – like, like either things went really sideways or things went really well and you're like yeah that's that's how you get it done i think during during the during operations when things go well they go super well but when things go bad they go super bad it, it sounds weird but it, it it kind of is on that spectrum 
you know, <clears throat> you, you you obviously plan for a plan for the successes, but un, undoubtedly there's always going to be a fragment of not it's not go, it's not going right. You're gonna you're not you're not particularly gonna have a good day. So <clears throat> I think at the level at the levels when when you're soldier at the levels you want a bit of what when you get to the the high parts of of your six of of the tree shall we say it's it you are where you will get um bad days you know it's even though you train to the best uh, and you've got the best skills you you with the best people you've got the best equipment etc there's always going to be something goes wrong yeah it's war and and and, and absolutely and, and it's adjusting to that really quick enough to to potentially stop it spiraling and, and get amongst it, turn it around and try and get it in your favor if if that's possible. But you know, it, it's thinking it's thinking that that quick seconds of of reacting and getting amongst it and changing that particular direction. Could, could you? And I think like... that's what cha- changes from um, from the normal quote soldiering to mm-hmm. to the to them levels that the normal kind of uh people who just go keep going or or stop or or don't think outside the box or don't think of alternatives whereas this roles you you've all got to have some kind of thought process quickly to and and, and you've got to know you've got to know what each other's kind of thinking as well because at the end of the day everybody needs to come home right are there like some examples that you could give, even if it has to be a, a bit general? Um, I mean, for instance, everybody wants to get off a helicopter, go into a, go into a compound, smash it up. That that's, and then get back on the helicopter and go home and have flipping drink all night. Mm. I mean that 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 that's that's the best options. And you know when it happens, it is great. But sometimes when you get there and you get off, you get on the ground. That ground might be the the wrong place to stand at the end of the day. Right. So you've got no way of knowing what what's coming at you at yeah. the end of the day. Um, unfortunately, and 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 that 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 type of war that a lot of people have to suffer that way, rather than you know what we're all used to, or what we all think we should be or what we think's normality. It, then the dirty bit gets in and and kind of takes over and ruins it all. Had the uh, the guys on your in, on your team had they deployed already? Like, did they have that on the ground experience? So a lot of them, yeah, a lot of them have been hardened, battled men for a long time, you know. Yeah. And 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 I, th- I think going going into a a, a an organization when you've got people who've done that it's you're in awe of them as well because they're and, and they don't they're not braggers right. they're, they're just right you just think about this way or you know go that way or <clears throat> at the end of the night when we're at home, when we're back at the base you know that think about this you know maybe you should put a diff put that in a different place on your chest or you know <clears throat> not right. fatiguing you but giving you some helpful advice which you you which you wouldn't understand or sorry you you wouldn't you wouldn't think of yourself but it's it's all that experience in that room you know there's 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 loads of man flipping operations um right. successful that's gone on that you draw onto to to for your success and for the team's success yeah right and it's interesting because you're when you talk about wearing something somewhere else on your chest, like these are things that people don't think about, but they make a huge difference. Like when you're trying to go yeah. over a wall and you get hung up because of a tiny thing yeah. that you've got there that, that goes great right there, but then it stops you yeah. from going over a wall. It's like, well, I guess I can't put that, you know, but yeah. yeah. It's- and, and, then, and, 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 and then you, you kind of, if, if you're doing that, you're stopping that train. Right. Or you're, or there's people in front of you who, who need your help or need you to be where, where you need to be, you know? Right. So it's not just you getting, stopping, stopping, stopping the actual momentum. It's there's, there's potentially life threatening, you know? Yeah. Now, so when you guys were uh, working, 
were you generally, uh, because when we're talking about these larger battle spaces in a smaller elite unit, obviously you still need, you know, security and support out there looking out for you guys. Yeah. Were you working with like coalition, like conventional forces? Were they kind of stepping up for you guys in that way? So we'd, we'd, we'd have people around us. Yeah. While we, Just different. while we went in. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And, and we'd always have people in the air watching us. So it's quite that, that is comforting because yeah. you know, you know, they're there um, and you're not on your own. <clears throat> I mean, we don't go in as a big group anyway, but right. the actual group, the actual group that's actually part of the whole lot is big. What, what was uh, oh, I, making? I got, I got to have to ask, what, what was it like working with the Yanks? <laughs> I mean, they, 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 they're all right. They're all right. <laughs> now, don't go gushing on them. Curb your enthusiasm. They're, they're all right. No, no. There's, I mean, I, I, um, I, I spent a lot of time with in America with 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 you guys, and it, it's it's good fun. It is good fun, um, and it and it's 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 a different it's a different way of seeing things completely. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the, the end game's always the same. Mm -hmm. We just get there in a different route. That's mm -hmm. all it is. And you've probably got better things to get there than we have. So, could, could you talk let's about go that? To, oh, let, oh, let's, oh, let, could, let's, oh. let's go to your house, nick some of your kit, and, and we'll go up on the <laughs> <Yeah>. house. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm interested, like, and, and this is not like a, a, a positive or negative or like dish and dirt, uh, but I am interested in like the, kind of the cultural differences in like the British special ops and the American special operations. Like, what were some of those differences that came out and like, how did you guys adapt and work to it? I, th I think that being being in America with, with uh, and rubbing shoulders with you guys and doing different courses and things, um, I think you guys are more open of who you are whereas we're kind of we don't walk around the uk saying we're in special forces kind of thing mm -hmm. or you know you, you guys are a more yeah you're more open to it on at home uh, what's the point of being a secret agent if you can't tell people you're a secret well, agent? I, I, I've, <laughs> I, I, I've said i've said this in the past and if, if you'll permit me pasha uh it, it, there, there's a lot of truth to what you just said in that the United States publishes like our government publishes press releases like, yeah, U.S. Special Forces is working in this country and that country. And we did a raid in Syria this day and that day. Whereas if you look at the Commonwealth countries, Canada, Australia uh, and the U.K. itself, it's much, much tighter. And, and some of the things that we would consider like just completely in the open and publicized is like national security secrets in some of these other yeah. countries. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, yeah, we 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 don't we won't walk around saying who we are or or have any kind of military um, kind of clothing walking around unless it's at work, you know. Is that is that because of operational security or is it just about being a quiet professional? Like, where does that come out of? I think a lot of it is because we've grown up with terrorism right. on the streets at home, you know, and, and we've had to, we've had to change our, our, our way of living. I mean, you know, for instance, <clears throat> I, I, well, a guy walking around in, in, in uniform, shall we say, and then a potential Irish person didn't like that, then, you know, your you and your family are at risk kind of thing you know it, it's you're not off duty when you are and i think we've all for, from from obviously the, the past which was only 20 30 years ago you know it was it, 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 it was a bad time i think we've adapted like that and uh and i th and i think it's better because you, you you kind of go to work put the stuff on and then you're at work with with your uniform on then you take it off you you leave there and then that's that's there i mean in your mind you're still doing everything and 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 watching your your back etc but you try and blend in and keep everything away from you because it's it's 
is personal security. Mm. Yeah. So like when you're at the pub and someone asks you who you are, what you do, what do you say? Well, when I was when I was there, I I I just make some bullshit up or or just start changing the subject or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there wouldn't because there wouldn't because I'm I'm five foot five and like seventy. So everyone thinks you should be twenty five stone and flipping six and a half foot. <laughs> It looked look like you're a recruiting poster for the Waffen SS, I, but I, yeah. I was going, I was actually going to ask you that because, you know, you went from, you know, the Royal Marines and an immortal platoon, you know, where obviously size is important in terms of the weight you're carrying and, and, and all that stuff. But then all of a sudden you go to a unit where not looking like what people think you should look like is kind of is, an advantage. Is a benef- can be very beneficial. Oh, the because of my size i was able to get through things and be first in potential places etc right because most guy, most guys can't get in there or or and, they have to and, remove and your 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 to, your, to, to, your, to, your ethnicity also allowed you to yeah, go places I, I, yeah absolutely I, I could walk around you know for instance you know surveillance and things like that i don't look like a military person right so on, on a on a counter terrorism role, I, I could be following somebody on the streets, just just minding my own business. No one potentially would think I would be a soldier getting ready to pull the team in, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And, and then also, I mean, what was it like working with your brothers in the SAS in Afghanistan? I mean, how, how did how did that kind of collaboration happen, and how did it work out? Well, we didn't we, we didn't really work together to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. We just we was there at different times. Oh, okay. So it's like a rotation schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Um, when you so when you said that you had come here and it, like it was a different culture, you, you didn't just necessarily mean like the SF community or special operations community, but just the military in general that they wore their uniforms and like they'd go out like at, at in uh, Fort Bragg out on the town and you know and it was yeah it, it was just it. Yeah, it, it's just different. Um, I mean, you, you can't really drink as good. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, plus, we had general order number one, which which you know hampered a lot of people. Not you know. all of us. <laughs> yeah, right. Hampered <laughs> other people. Um, what? Because obviously, these were a different. You and uh, uh, and Robin were separated by you know a time frame. But he said one of the things he noticed when he'd come to the states was that you know the brits had a much different sense of humor and 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 where like the spec ops guys that they would work with were almost always almost kind of uptight in a way uh yeah where they were i mean we've got a reputation of like taking the piss yeah um and you guys it it you can tell sometimes you you're saying some and, and trying to be funny or something. You get you kind of getting upset about it. <laughs> and you can see you can see the faces changing. You know, I'm not after a fight. I'm yeah. just like taking the piss out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys that have a stick up their ass. Yeah, yeah. really getting serious. Like, oh, sorry, mate. Are we all right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Pasha, there's because of the time frame that you served in. I, I want to ask you a, a question that is maybe maybe it is a little bit sensitive, and and if you prefer to pass on this entirely, I, I won't be offended. Um, there was a, there was an operation that the SBS participated in, is in some some shape or form in Nigeria in 2012, a hostage rescue that went really bad, a uh, rescue for of a British national and an Italian national. And uh, I, I mean, if you have any sort of like insights into it, it might be a good opportunity to add some context. But um, I, I'd be interested to hear your perspective. But again, if, if you prefer to pass on this one, like I, I, I won't be offended by it. Well, I, I, that, I wasn't. So my role at that particular time, I was I was training, training guys at home. So I wasn't in I had like a bit of a downtime of two years. Mm-hmm. So I. I was just teaching. Yeah. So I, I didn't really, I didn't really, and I had, it was kind of my downtime. So I didn't really yeah. know much what was, what, what was the weird thing is when, when all these, when things are happening around the world with, with units like this, you don't really hear, always hear about them when you're on the camp mm-hmm. because nobody's on camp, right? Nobody's there. 
they're all every, everybody's out and about and doing things and, and, unless you're in quote in an ops room watching or knowing about it you don't particularly know until weeks months later and then you, you meet someone in later on and say oh did you hear about so and so? Because everyone's out and busy and, and and getting on with it. So and you don't actually necessarily know what each other, each other's um, platoons are doing anyway. So because you're focused on what you need to do, it's it's kind of your own little world. W w was there anything that like came out of that to your recollection? I I I don't know, mate. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, what you're what what for people who might not be aware, like what Jack's talking about is open source. Like it's it's known that, you know, that this hostage situation happened, and, um, yeah, and like nobody did anything wrong. It just like the, no, no, yeah. I I, I yeah. wasn't I wasn't implying no, that no, at I all. Know that. Um, but I mean, yeah, that 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 was an example of a mission that went wrong, and perhaps. Well, when you operate with foreign nationals, it, it, it is what it is sometimes, you know, you're what, not you're not in charge over there. What was that like for you guys in Afghanistan? Like how involved, uh, you know, because because you, you're not, you know, you, you're called special forces in Britain, but you're you're not trained the same way the Green Beret are with the hearts and like the indigenous sort of hands on mm. stuff. How was that for you guys going from a kind of a CT role? And I know you were still like direct action, but you're still like dealing with villagers, dealing with, you know, with things that are sort of, uh, sh I, I'm going to say shouldn't have been necessarily in your wheelhouse. Well, uh, to be honest, when, when, when you're, when you're on the ground, you don't really get much face to face with people. <laughs> you don't really get much conversations um so you don't really need people to kind of do that you didn't need to do all the too much yeah <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You, so you're there for a different kind of reason so yeah. Th yeah there's no kind of hearts and minds when we're knocking on door or something like that yeah so i think everybody wants to know did you guys fall under general order number one and if not did everybody come harass you guys to get them booze We had good drinks now and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was. So wow. as your as your your your, uh, your your career moved along, I mean, you, you spent uh, what twelve years in the SB, SBS. Um, what were some of the other like roles that you fell in on, and some of the additional like skills that you learned as, as time went on in the unit? Um, I did a lot of diving. Mm -hmm. I really I really started to enjoy my diving. Um, and I spent a lot of time underwater and I really enjoyed that. Um, which is, which is more of a niche as well, because underwater, I mean, underwater, no one's saving you that there's so much safety involved and the safety to, <clears throat> to the outcome, you, you, you know, it's to get and do what you need to do with whatever you've, all you've got is, obviously what you've got on and it's it's mostly life life saving equipment really mm -hmm. and yeah you still got your, your 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 weapons but that's kind of put to one side it's mostly your life saving equipment to get to you from a to b and then then you've got to actually get ready to prepare to have a scrap mm -hmm. so i think i think people don't understand or don't sometimes think of that 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 underwater part or that water part is it takes a lot out of you, you know. Yeah. And you've got you've got to learn how to, you know, try and control control your breathing and relax a bit and 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 maintain it to until you get to that position, <clears throat> and either you're going to get out or whatever you're going to do. Then then you then you've got to switch it on because that's even though you're underwater, that's a life threatening position anyway. Right. Then at the other side, you you've you've got a potential even more life threatening because someone's coming at you full 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 steam ahead right and then potentially you've got to get home so the the battle's not finished by you, you're just going to get a ride back on a helicopter or something then you've got to get make your way back to somewhere <laughs> else that's you're going to start you know fatiguing quite quite quickly if you don't um get it right or if, if you're not good, going to get the straight line back to a position because the the tide's gone the wrong way or something you've planned the tide wrong you know you, it, you're in a nightmare yeah 
What was that a capability that you ever had the opportunity to use operationally? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Out of curiosity, because you guys did have this responsibility like the SA didn't have in terms of the maritime operation and diving, you know, when you're when you're doing it operationally, like it's not paddy diving, you know, it, no. It, no. right? Um, and whether you're driving, you know, a closed system or an open system or whatever, like um, just fluctuating, you know, up and down because you have buoyancy issues can lead to a lot of it's stuff. It's a nightmare. Yeah. And well, you can you can blow your lungs up just from doing that. And so you guys are going and, you know, we've had SEALs on and they, they probably go through the exact same stuff in the sense you go from this land war and then you have to come back and be this you know, proficient maritime operator and, and able to, you know, the proficiencies that you have to safely maintain. conduct. Yeah. And, and it's, yeah. and it's, it's, there's a lot of risk, uh, with, mm -hmm. with those systems. So uh, like, how would you guys get back up to speed? Would, would it be guys in your own dive locker? Did you have like Royal Navy divers on hand to like, to sort of keep you guys? We we'd teach. So, so we, 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 we teach ourselves in house. So, I mean, the, the good thing, or maybe the bad thing about the UK waters, you can't see anything usually. So it's <laughs> yeah, like yeah. it's like it's like that. Yeah. So you, when you're practicing a particular scenario in these waters, you, you're full on practicing because unless you're unless you're going on that direction for a certain time to get to a certain place, you're not you've got to trust everything because you can't like for instance. If you're in Hawaii, I can see where I'm going. It's right there. Yeah, you know, and and you, it's all it, it's all relaxing. Well, more relaxing. Whereas if it's completely n nothing and something's just brushed you because you don't even know what it is because you can't even see th anything anyway. And then you've got to get to a, a place and it's pretty cold. Right. Um, I think it's it's more it's more testing most, yeah. most definitely. Yeah. So basically you would just, you guys were responsible for doing your own training, like getting back into the swing of that. Did, did, did you guys ever, did you personally ever feel that across the breadth of missions that, that the SBS was responsible for, especially with the, like the rotation, the cycle with the wars and everything like that. Did you ever feel like you guys were kind of like that certain parts of your mission that you weren't doing, uh, that weren't necessary for the war and stuff like that? that like things were falling behind because you had so many different responsibilities? Not really, because <clears throat> um, the people back back at the HQ obviously know the momentum, know, know what people are doing. So th there's people saying, when was the last time you particularly did this? Or uh -huh. you need to go back to do that because you haven't done. Or there's something bubbling over here that you haven't particularly done any training on that that um task as it were you need to go away and do that in the middle of this that and that so a lot of that does happen and unfortunately because there's not enough time you might be losing losing your own time to get yourself in a better better situation because there's there's not enough time to get everything in yeah but then then you think the outcome of what you're doing it for then kind of matters right and at a certain point, you uh, also got involved in doing like the canine position too, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I had I had a dog for for quite some time, which which was amazing. Um, unfortunately, I mean, dogs are amazing, but they don't seem to have a long life a lifespan. Um, and dog lovers, it's frigging hard. Yeah. You know, you, you've grown up with that. Not you don't grow up with that. You've you've you've, you've been like they training don't, they, with that they don't, dog. They don't have a know. long lifespan in the unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he's doing his job, and he's he's, you know, a lot of times that's I think for for me personally that was one of the it was horrible. Could, could you talk a little bit about like what that job entailed and like how you came in on that? Well, I just volunteered for it at the end of the day. I. I I've always had dogs at home. Um, I like dogs. Um, and I just wanted to uh, potentially get, get up front again, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, get, get up, get up front, get, get amongst 
get is, amongst the baddies for bad, bad bad people first and i've got a dog with me now how cool yeah. is that just take him off and see what he does you know so th this was after your time in the training uh training other guys yeah yeah yeah, yeah to get yeah. back into it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah it's it's it, it it was a it was a great opportunity because yeah getting back getting back up the front again you know and the guys are obviously backing you up and backing the dog up and yeah it was a it's a great opportunity uh, and and them dogs are phenomenal what they what they do and the, you know that they're there to protect you and and and, and rightly so that they do and uh, and yeah like I said unfortunately a lot of them don't retire. They're, they're amazing. They're, I mean, those, those, mm. those service dogs are, are, they're fearless. The working dogs. Mm. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and the good thing is, you know, that they're, they're, they, they are, they are part of the team because they're, they, they live with you and, and, you know, because that dog needs to smell all the guys and keep that smell, you know, keep that smell. He, he'll know what the, the bad people smell like. Yeah. So he knows when it's pitch black and who's in that room, he knows what the good, who who's good and bad and, and, and does his job. Yeah. And how, how was that for you as like a canine handler on target? Like if you could talk a little bit about what, what that was like. Well, you, you kind of, you kind of back up there as in, because you're, you're a massive asset for the team. Mm. You know, there, there's, 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 there's something that needs to be sorted. And the only way we're going to get, or potentially, the only way we're going to move is deploy the dog. Um, <clears throat> the dog will go and do his job and, and hopefully do it right. And then we can hopefully go and help him because, you know, he's, he's just give himself up for us. Right. The right. Day. Yeah. So can we talk about working dogs in a little bit? Because, you know, I think for a lot of people, the images of a police dog, which is like going after a criminal, which which working dogs can do, they can then go on the attack, yeah. but they can also do recce. Like they can do so many different things. Can you sort of talk so, about so, their mission? So set? they so, so they can attack. They, yeah. They'll they'll go and attack and rip the boat's throat out if if that's if that's what they're asked to do. They can get, they can smell um, munitions, um, obviously ID IEDs and things like that. They can do all that kind of stuff. They can s uh, smell drugs. Mm. So th their capability for for the team is absolutely massive. Absolutely. So, you know, that they're protecting you, that they're they're potentially walking in the steps that you don't want to walk down first. So mm -hmm. they're they're making the path for you. Uh, and if anything down that path that they come across, then unfortunately they might get it. Or we, we they'll that they'll find it, smell it out, and then we 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 get round it and, and, and move forward. This, yeah. There's so many things that that dog does for us. It's it's unbelievable. Uh, can uh, can can you say uh, what your dog's name was? Maybe the retired ones. No, no, I don't, I don't want to say that. It's, it's it's just a it's just a dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh, like I'd seen you know on Target, you know the the handlers, you know they'd have the canine like the canine systems where you know they've got the they've got the iPad right there. Or, or the yeah. tablet, yeah, yeah, and the dog's going yeah. in with an IR light, you're watching, yeah, and the, yeah, and you're watching. you can see every bad guy in there because the dog's just creeping, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. really yeah. amazing it's, capability. It's, it's, it's un unbelievable, yeah, unbelievable capability because, yeah, y y yeah, it, unbelievable, yeah, yeah, super brave too. Those dogs don't run like no matter what's going down, and they're so they're so agile. They can jump, flipping, you know, unbelievably, and grab hold of someone, and, yeah. And, tear them apart yeah yeah were you guys using i mean i don't know if you know if you can say but were you guys using the malin the malinois hmm. yeah that was mean, one of our dogs yeah, yeah, yeah. So, i mean it's kind of one of the common dogs interesting um yeah fascinating so how how long did you how long did you do that and did you miss sort of being like like the number one or two man in the door or did you did you feel satisfied like being like well th that's why i wanted to that's why I wanted to do the dog handling again. or do the dog handling because I wanted to be up front again because okay. I've, I've been in a I've been in a while by then and yeah, I see. My time was my time was pr probably coming back a bit. Yeah. So to get to get the dog, you kind of get back up there. Reset. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you also got involved in working with the submersibles, right? Which is pretty cool. Yeah. So I did a lot of diving on on submersibles. Um, yeah. Again. Uh, 
it, it is it's a, it's a system that you breathe you breathe obviously from um gets you gets you around um it, it's a tool it's a tool at the end of the day and and you know for instance if you're going from a to b and if that distance is quite long or if, if it's against a an obstacle, i.e., tides, wind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you've got a, a, something to get you there, then why wouldn't you use it and right. get to the other side in a better in a better state to take on the task? So the more the more equipment you can cheat, kind of, to get to do that, then it's a it's a no brainer. And 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 the, and the thing is, because it's, it's all underwater, yeah. unless you've got some super cool stuff that detects all that stuff, then yeah. You're a sign. You're silent, and 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 you're you're against you 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 got you one step in front completely. So, uh, like having spoken with like seal delivery vehicle guys in the past, like they they love the system to get them from point A to point B, and they hated the system because they weren't swimming while they were in it. And yeah, you sat freezing there. Well, you're freezing cold. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you're getting cold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And and I, I honestly to God I have no idea like what's open source as far as the British military is concerned. But I mean, are you allowed to talk about the submersibles and the models or anything at all? Oh uh, no, no. Okay, no. that's yeah. No, I get it. What, what about the range and depth? Can you tell us? I'm just kidding. I'm that's just even kidding. worse. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm just kidding. So. Um, so how long have you been in the the Marines at this point in time? How long have you been in the military? Well, not the Marines, so but I did all of it. Yeah. So, so I did I did 13 years in in, 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 in the SBS. So, all in 27 years. I did, I did 14 in the Royal Marines and 13 in the, in, in the SBS. Uh, it's incredible. And, and you did three tours to Afghanistan? Or two? Two, two two tours to Afghanistan, and then I'm sure that like there are still like there were there are things going on everywhere. Uh, oh, you, you wouldn't believe because the, the stuff happening everywhere all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Were are uh, could you talk about the counter drug trafficking stuff at all? Um, well, before I went into. Uh, the SBS. I I actually, sorry, no, I wasn't actually in the SBS. We 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 um, well, I personally went and helped the Marines actually because they was um, trying to stop the pirates, as it were, um, <clears throat> and they didn't really know what they was doing. So I went along, um, met up with them, and 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 guided them on how to go and find these um, small boats with all these. Um, bags of stuff and et cetera, et cetera. And, and how, how to find them and, and what to do when you, when you, when you actually can see them and, 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 and what your rules are of the next phase. Are, are so, you, yeah, I, I, I enjoy, I, I totally enjoy that because I was with normal Marines and they was looking up at me and, and um, they was a bit young and, potentially inexperience of what those what they're allowed to do and and, and how they're allowed to do it and, and whereas our rules of engagement are a little bit different right uh, where, where were these pirates somewhere hot <laughs> what what was like uh because so i'll say in the united states like there were n not just between presidents, but during administrations, like the rules of engagement in Afghanistan changed like constantly based on what like UNHR was saying, based on, you know, different types of things that were going down. Um, we know and have since learned that uh, the French were like, uh, like far more direct and, and less like reluctant when it came to their rules of engagement, that they were very... Uh, proactive about the protection of their troops and things like that. How was it for you guys? Did it fluctuate uh, or, or was it pretty much Not really? It was, it was all, you know what the rules are. That's, that's right and wrong as it were, you know, that's pretty much it. If you're doing the wrong things, then you'll be, well, 
you'll be sanctioned told off kind of well, well yeah. told off <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah did did you guys uh, you know like working within the coalition forces um you know working with like american elements or not if not directly with them then sort of if they were the battle space owners were there ever issues between what your like rules of engagement were and what theirs were and and things like that no not really not really i mean like you say the the battle fit the battle space is predominantly run by you guys and and your 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 um looking after the different levels up there etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. so <clears throat> that most most of what we got in support was you guys anyway so it was it it was comforted because well having said that anyone up that in that stack would do do what you'd ask them to do anyway so but but it's usually but it was usually you guys in that stack ready it they they knew that they would be getting some action that night you know? yeah yeah and and you never had well i guess because it was nighttime like i think some of the issues came up when like day you know the sun would break and ac was still up or things like that but but you guys always felt supported and and like very oh absolutely uh, yeah I mean, we won't be on the ground without any, with without a, a lot of support. Yeah, well, because you're, whatever you're we was doing was was a bad was bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, from Jack and I and, and all Americans, you're welcome. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. Um, so as as time goes on, I mean, you, you know, you're a, a seasoned SBS operator. Uh, and, and had a pretty uh, amazing career between the Royal Marines and the SBS. Like, how how does that start to like wind down for you? How how does that like retirement come into the picture? It for me, it came to I was getting tired because mm. th there was no kind of downtime, um, and I had I personally had a um, a lot of luck, and on one particular time. I, I I had a great a lot of luck, and I was like, I'm, I'm think I think I'm ready to hang up my weapon now, and and that was that was kind of instant. It wasn't it wasn't kind of planned. It was like I've, I'm really? tired. There, and... there was, was was there like a certain event or a, a, an yeah, incident? Yeah, it was an it was an it was an event. Yeah. But but previous throughout throughout my career there, I I I got in situations and I was lucky. I was always. I, for me personally, I'm not saying for people around me necessarily, but I was, I was lucky and, and I'd, I'd always note that down as well. And, and, you know, there'd, there'd be times when I'm looking at my luck and thinking how much luck can one person have? And then, and then I, I did get into a situation and I was very lucky. And I was like that, I'm, I've, I've done 27, well, I've done quite a lot of years by then. I was like that, right. I'm ready to, I'm ready to go now. And, and I want to be, and I wanted to be a family man then because I, I wasn't a family man. I had a family, and I but I wasn't a I wasn't a father or or a, or a husband, because I always, selfishly. Whenever I was going away, I was like that. I can't think of them because, this right. I'm right, here yeah, for yeah. a re I'm here for a reason, right. and that reason unfortunately isn't to think on a on a on a on a line. What if the kids have just gone to bed? Right, right, right. And that, 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 yeah, that it, it wasn't planned. It was just, that's, that's me now. That, so that is a really like sharp corner that you turned. Yeah. Um, and you know, no regrets. I'm, I'm, I mean, when I left, I, my transition was really cool. Um, I didn't get in, 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 you know, into any difficulties as it were. Um, I, I did a straight cut. I didn't want to, I thought I wanted to be a, a civilian. So I went into a civilian job straight away before I actual left. I got permission to go work because I got the job. Um, I did that for a few years and didn't particularly like offices and kind of people, civilian people <laughs> kind of thing. So um, I then I went then I went to what I was comfortable. I went into security and, and went straight into um, close protection um, and did that. For, and which is weird because 
it went back to, for instance, you know, I'm in the special forces and you're out, you're out and about and you don't tell any people. And that's what kind of went, I went back into because if I, t if I was in the pub and I said, Oh, you know, what did you do yesterday for work? And if I said, oh, I protected so-and-so and so-and-so, -so, they'd be like, yeah, piss off. Right. Because you don't look like the, you don't look like the average close protect. Well, I don't like the, the average close protection person, right. but they don't seem to realize it's the, the close protection person can mingle and, and, and right. see situations. Right rather than be the six foot massive right, in right. front of the client. Right. And, and that's that's how I've always been able to get in really good um, tasks. And and it's always worked. And from 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 day one of my close protection, I, I went straight into royalty and I've, I, I've been at that level since. And, and recently I've started my own business because it's it, yeah, again, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a position where I always want something up there. Right. That that that's never kind of stopped. There's always you get to a position, you think right, I'm comfortable, but now I want to get up there. I want to, I, I want to get into that position. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I think I've, lot, I, I've spoken to people who like you know like rappers and celebrities want like a big dude well, who's like a minder. They need meat you know. You know, but, they need a meat shield. But but somebody who is like a billionaire or yeah. somebody who's a head of yeah, state yeah. wants someone who can just like blend right in. Yeah. Like you are just seamless yeah. and no one notices you're there. Yeah. Somebody who's famous needs yeah. somebody who can move a crowd, right? Like move people yeah, out yeah. of their way. But a businessman, uh, a politician, they don't want that. They want somebody who sees, no. can drive. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and 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 not be the broad. Right. And, be 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 a personality as well right even though even though you're you know you're looking long look and looking what's happening and but you're still holding a conversation walking down a high street yeah with right, right, a right. particular royal family who she, who's got a baseball cap on don't want to know but a royal he, what, what royal family could that possibly be posh i can't <laughs> possibly i can't i'm remember. not telling you that one <laughs> <laughs> but you know but it it, it 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 it's so rewarding that i can mm. or to, to, to walk around in that space and give them the freedom that we all want that freedom, but sure. just because how they've been born or how that, how, how money's got into them, they've got potentially have to change their lifestyle, but if they can do their normal pattern of life and that's all they want, um, without getting any, um, any, anybody, any obstacles as it were, then, then your job's done. Have you um, uh, happened to work like uh, with a client who had an actual like active threat, like a stalker or something like that? Oh, absolutely. I I worked with um, a person who came to this country who very, very famous Middle Eastern, very rich person, shall we say, who wanted to hurt her and the family. So there was a, ma the, the, a massive threat, it's, you know, and you don't really get that in the UK. I mean, there's there's there, there's not people walking around with weapons and things things like that. Well, you know, there isn't, but the, the, there's money can talk at the end of the day. Yeah, I I, I was going to ask Pasha on the, on this particular subject. I mean, like uh, when you're a private security guard in, in the UK, are you even allowed to be armed? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to uh, be know, sm and, smarter, not harder. Yeah, absolutely. You, you've got to think and 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 read read what's happening. I mean, I mean, it's more of a it's more of a mental um, right task right. rather than a physical task because you, right. you you're scouring all the time. You're looking for potential potential threats, and and you know the big threat. One of the big threats is walking around with a bottle of acid. How can you tell that that bottle's not got acid in at the end of the day? You know, it, right? It, and and you know, you, and if 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 your client has potentially got that threat against them, right? Every you know, if you're walking down the street and people they're walking around with a cup of coffee, right? You've got you that's a potential threat, and you've got to get yourself in the way, in in the way of the of the client without the client knowing what's going on. Uh, or without the potential threat, knowing what you're doing, right? Do, and, do, and 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 ninety nine point nine percent, it isn't a threat. It's just your 
negating it by by putting yourself in there and making making it right that if it is a threat you've got it covered do, do you want to talk about that a little bit that you uh i, I believe you have a, a security company today yeah so black box um global um so we do we do um executive protection um <clears throat> and and it, and it's good that the network i have is potentially tier one um and the tiers of the high um, counter um, surveillance um, terrorist um, policemen, that kind of level. So they're all 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 in all on uh, our books. So the, the kind of level of operator you're going to get is the top of what the UK has provided. <clears throat> rather than rather than like you say, just a normal person who's standing at a door who's looking tough but right, really right he, he probably can't, right, right. can't even run down the road and he can't even mentally see what the situation is getting himself into yeah i, I think that one of the things you see with celebrities a lot is you know is they get buddy guards you know like yeah they, and they that's get, what it is they, they get the biggest friends yeah. that they have they pay them to protect them and those guys often start fights instead of yeah like yeah because they're looking at they're looking gruesome and and there's and and people get the attitude because why do you need to look like that and and put a threat to other people when you're making yourself you're the threat the 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 the, the cp's making himself the threat because he's 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 egging people on to 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 start something right yeah it's it's a very different world between like celebrities often and uh, and like, like you say, like business people, high net value. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. And and at the end of the day, they 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 don't want they don't want it. They want to take off that posh, expensive watch. They want to go and have some freedom. They want to go to have a coffee. Uh, you know, they want the time out. How, and, how, and, 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 uh, sorry, I know. Please, and and like ahead. and like their children, they don't want their children to be grown up behind behind the wall or behind the wire kind of thing. They need to have their normal right. lives as well. How hard is it to convince somebody like that? Um, you know, like uh, it was Kim Kardashian, right? Who got robbed in her hotel because she sent her security off. And then she basically, yeah. I guess, took a photo of herself in her hotel room and somebody put it all together. Whatever, however it went down. But how hard is it to sort of like allow your client to live a normal life. life or, you know, be socialness yeah. and that, but also not like show all their jewelry and what hotel room they're staying in at the same time. Yeah. It's, 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 it's advising, but being a stern advisor, but mm-hmm. <laughs> being a friend, mm-hmm. being, being, being a friend as well, rather than, rather than the, the, the bodyguard it's, it's look, you know, have you thought about this? You know, instead of doing that, have you thought about this way? You know, I think, I think in the circumstances in this in this potential hotel or wherever we're going, the likelihood of someone doing A, a B and C is quite high. So if we go this way or if you want to potentially put a baseball cap on or, you know, don't carry anything as we're going along mm-hmm. and or we've got a QRF, QRF follow shadowing us, et cetera, et cetera. You, you, it's just educating them rather than, telling letting them dictate what they want because it's not necessarily safe what they 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 want yeah yeah is it uh challenging for you to find uh, guys to do like the protective surveillance to you know to kind of fill out all the roles no n- not at all because the roles we go for like i say uh, are the high high paying clients shall we say mm-hmm. which if you're getting paid the higher daily rate right. then you're getting paid that for a reason right right and and, then, and if oh. and, and and if you want to stay then you need to produce that and if if i'm paying you right then when you go to the next task you tell everybody that i paid you right and and, and it went well then then your company gets the good reputation because a lot of these companies take a lot of a lot of the the money themselves and yeah. pay pay the guys pretty pretty poor really yeah yeah. And then how do you manage 
uh, because, you know, like the whole work life balance or being with your family while you're deploying all the time, what was kind of tough on you? How did you manage that with CP? Because that that can also be a very demanding job. Um, so I when I when I went on the a full time royalty kind of job, it was a rotation, which which was fine, because at the end of the day, the I was only a few hours from home anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I could always have a phone. I could always ring up. Whereas on, on deployments, et cetera, you can't. Whenever we went away, we wasn't taking our mobile. We wasn't. We didn't have a facility to do the, the communications, which 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 is tough in these in, in this in these days. Which mm -hmm. 20, 30 years ago is the not we wouldn't do that anyway. But in these days, everyone needs to know what's happening now, etc. So. Right. My family's been used to the fact that they haven't heard from me for six months. So missing a day, not ringing up really isn't, it isn't a problem. And because I'm in mostly the UK, there's not kind of a threat that some, cause I, cause I haven't rang right. that there's potentially something wrong. Right, right, right. And you're also not so worried about getting like in the right headspace. So I'm not going to talk to my family because I'm going yeah. to stop. Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And like, so you're start, you started this business and where can people find you? If you know, if are you on social so, media? So, um, we haven't, we're not really social media at the moment, but it's most, uh, well, all our work at the moment has been word of mouth, but we've got a, a website, blackboxglobal.net. Um, so if, if anybody is interested in them kind of services, um, you will get the high tier, um, operator, um, whether that be military police, um, <clears throat> you will, you will get that. And, and you know, with, with, with that comes a wealth of experience. And the good thing with, with that is cause we've, um, not just kept it military, we kept it police. All all the the new kind of systems, the arresting systems, what's what what counter terrorist, what the threats are, etc. Kind of drips back into us now because it's kind of open source to them, right? That they can they can dwell on it and and, and keep us updated. And for instance, if we went into a different country, we can kind of get the intelligence briefs uh -huh. of what is what is the threats in 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 that place where then our operators are, are, are more confident and happy that if if I put out a job a specification, they know what the parameters are or what the risks are before they actually put their hand and say they're interested, which I think it, it sh that should be done from any, any, any kind of role. But a lot of people don't even do that. They'll say, is anybody available to go to, I don't know, for instance, Iraq for three months on, three months off. But right. what is what what are you doing what what is what risk is that right and 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 it's not it's it's different now because in the military you kind of that's part of it you don't really think of the risk it's because it's your job and right. and, and you're getting paid 24/7 to do that anyway whereas nowadays we need to we need to be open booked to the operators wherever they're going because they need to perform in that situation and like the military they're not going to get a flipping ton of people right. knocking down that wall to, to get them out. Do you know? Do, and that is the main, I mean, we will get people to come, but not like whatever, what, what, what we're all used to that the army is going to come rolling in and smash right. the doors down and get you. Do you're you know not, I mean? you're not getting an AC one thirty. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not putting my DNA all over the room and someone's going to find that. So right. yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, government sales, Black Box Global could always buy their own AC-130. Get, get, <laughs> get, get, into, get into the you've Eric Prince too, business. You've been watching too much Stallone films there. <laughs> do, we, do we have any questions? We do, we do. Uh, uh, what about yourself personally? Do you have, like, if people want to, like, follow you and catch up, do you have, like, social media that you post on? And uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I do most of my work on LinkedIn. Okay. So LinkedIn, I, I, I post every day on LinkedIn. Um, a lot of my work comes in through LinkedIn. <clears throat> uh, let's get to the questions here. Uh, 
Um, and again, we, we we understand that like uh, the Commonwealth has much stricter rules on like freedom of speech for the for your veterans than than the United States does. So if any of these questions are sensitive at all, just let us know. People people completely yep. understand. Um, Joe's uh, gotcha. Thank you very much. Uh, do you get did you get to work with the Special Reconnaissance Regiment on deployments? Yes. Um, Patrick Howard, thank you very much. Uh, 50. I don't know what that is. Um, hmm. um, DJ Sneed, maybe I missed something. DJ Sneed, uh, thank you very much. Is there a, uh, a higher echelon of SBS similar to Dev Group or E Squadron in the 22 SAS? And, you know, you had mentioned already that the SBS was it basically kind of is. Yeah. SEAL Team 6. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, uh, D, did you happen to look at Patreon? No, but I saw that you might have one. Um, wait, did, Patrick, are you trying to, like, sigh at me here? I, I feel like you... You donated too much, two dollars, which we really appreciate, and then you put fifty down in the comment. So you're trying to, <laughs> like, you're trying to throw me. Like, it's like showing somebody a green card and printing red on it and like throwing them off. I don't know what the play was, <laughs> but hey, that means it worked. You know it's good. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Simon asks, "Thanks, guys. There's a risk that UK defense cuts will lead to the loss." of mountain leaders. If so, how might that accumulate exper accumulated experience and knowledge be maintained for future generations? So, so, so what you're saying that the UK are deficient mountain leaders at the moment? Yeah, I guess he's mentioning like the def defense cuts in the UK might get rid of the mountain leaders. I, I, I don't, I don't think they, they would do beyond, to be honest, when, when the UK does the defense kind of cuts, on the manpower that the marines don't really get cuts they 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 it's the the marines because, there because they're the many, business so, so, sorry they're, because they're the business well they're not that big anyway if you think about it the marines i think are they're only about six thousand people anyway no no i i, I so, said that because they're the business like they're the big uh, abso absolutely yeah the top yeah, dogs. yeah. yeah. <laughs> The most bang for the but, buck. But, yeah, 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 no, it is. Yeah, but, yeah. So, so they don't really get, get, get cut. Yeah. So, I think with 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 the the mountain leaders, this it, it is a, it's like the selection. So in the selection, uh, the SF selection, you get so many hundreds going for it, and and five will pass. That's kind of the same kind of thing as the MLs. But you'll always get that continued um, application of people wanting to go for it because. It is a sought after course. It's the it's the toughest course in the Royal Marines and the longest. So, and it's looked upon for the rest of the uh, rest of the Western world as, as as that as well. So, people will always want to do that. And with that, then that mountain leader has got many so, so many options. Not just being the the the, the, the instructor is 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 he can go up up two hundred kilometers up up the front line doing whatever he needs to do laying down everything for for when the Rome rings turn up etc so that that's um trade i don't i don't believe i'll, I'll ever dis or, or, or leave or i'll struggle uh, one more uh what really drove the sbs sas merger in quotations was it largely political hmm. um to be honest that when they merged together it was before before i actually went and did selection so that was potentially early 90s um, and i and i think i don't know the exact reason but i think it, it 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 was just so they both do the same kind of training to start with there's no difference so they, they can't one unit can't say they're better because they do a longer a longer selection or this a different kind of selection everybody's in the mix and at the end of the at the end of the the, the selection process everybody's gone through the same the same kind of co well the same kind same course so we're all equal at the end of the day 
I, I think that what people really want to know, because when you compare like the tier one units to the U.S. and you say you guys are sort of like SEAL Team 6, do you have better hair products than the SAS? <laughs> well, I am 51. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're we're all dealing we're all dealing with this issue. I'm all not, of us. I'm not. I dealt with it when I was thirty. Problem solved. Problem staying solved. <laughs> um, what is there uh, like? What is the rivalry? Because obviously there's got to be a rival between the SBS and the SAS. But like, how does that rivalry? Like, what's the tone? Like, what are things you guys fuck with each other about? Well, we don't really. Really, at the end of the day, it'll, be, it'll, it'll just be banter. It'll just be banter, yeah, but it'll yeah, be nothing. Yeah. It'll, Look, be, it'll be nothing sinister. I, I'm, no, I'm, I, it's no, just banter. I don't, I don't mean sinister, but like, are there things you guys hold hold against each other? Like, e, e, I mean, in a joking way. Like, we tease seals incessantly, but we have, it's one team, one fight. Like, we have nothing but love for them. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, because they play volleyball, they have a nice hair products, and you know. Six pack Great. abs. I'm Great a little tans. jealous. Yeah, I am. <laughs> well, well, well. The, the SBS do a lot, do look a lot fitter than the SAS. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you said they're better, so well. Uh, well, no big deal. Hey, it happens. Um, is there anything that we neglected to cover? Anything that you want to talk about that we missed? No, I, I think I think we've gone through most of it, and and I think I. I, I briefly mentioned that you know through throughout that process of me being in the military the bit the bit i neglected was the family and I, i'm i'm happy that i've left now and yeah. actually doing my being being a family man because i i started my family after i passed selection because i wanted everything in place yeah so that um you know they could have what they wanted kind of thing but it didn't really work because they didn't have me. So now, now that they've got me, I need to fast or rewind as much as I can to try and mm. squeeze in what mm. I can before right. before they've gone. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 that is difficult because there's only so much that the children want to want to do with you. Firstly, right. Um, and you know, we've as, as as parents, we've only got a certain window where we where we can actually do this without when they've gone right um and and that's that's what i'm battling with now i mean i've I've still got a few years but i i i started well when when i left i it, one of my main efforts was to to be a dad to 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 do sports to do this to do that and to be on a shoulder rather than you know when do you think dad's home again that's real that's no that's really cool yeah have that's, you yeah have you thought about taking them to a pub and getting in a good like <laughs> A good punch up, like nothing brings the team together like a good row. <laughs> uh, they're, they're not they're not old enough yet, but I'm sure I'm sure I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, that that's that's super cool, Pasha. I mean, it, it's it's a great like a story about transitioning from being a special operator to a dad. Yeah, and it, mm -hmm. it's like such an important like human experience. It's, it's great, and I, I'm glad that you were able to come on here and talk about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you talked about something earlier too because you said about. about being selfish, like being in your headspace or, you know, but the thing is, and, and Jack and I've talked about this before too, like there's the whole thank you for your service thing, but especially for people who are in special ops, like we were extremely selfish. Like we were living the lives that we had designed yeah, for yeah, ourselves. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and like a lot of us left loved ones behind families, marriages neglected so that we could, mm. so that we could like live our yeah. dream. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the wives and the kids that support all of that. Yeah. And, and that you're able to put, put, put a part of that life somewhat behind you and move on to the and, next and stage yeah. is really, yeah. really cool. That's fantastic. And, and, and the, the, the people that I went through my squadron life, I'm probably one of one of one or two that's left married. Yeah. Yeah. Which um, is a huge un achievement. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, like, it's, it's not to like for like civilians out there watching that maybe don't understand, but to go through the career that you had and for being married, yeah, it's like it's, a huge it's accomplishment in of itself. And, and coming home, uh, mm. you know, not releasing what you've done, things like that, but, but talking, 
talking about certain things, right. that's a big dwell dwell on them as well. I mean, I didn't always go out and go get but when I come home, I wouldn't go downtown and I'd come home because yeah, again, I needed to be with my family. But yeah. But th there was times when you're actually getting drunk and telling your wife, oh, I'm a bit down because of the and, and it's a lot for them to burden on, really. Right. And, and to go through the process of kind of picking up your shit. Right. Uh, right. And, and to stay in with you and, and, and to uh, to turn that around, to, firstly, to make you try and make you feel better. But right. then process process their yeah, their yeah. mental status mm -hmm. because they they kind of get went through it in a sense pushed up pushed onto it as right it, you in their know. own way i mean for instance what, what one night i jumped on the wife and started strangling and i've done it a few times uh, and because I've, I've i've got bad dreams etc you know and thankfully we've got through that but but you would wake up in this state y yeah. Yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and and that that you know that's that isn't normal but when right. you've been through situations right i mean it's not an excuse but it, it's it's a uh, look. I'm sorry. I, uh, it's a reality. You know, right. Be, it's a bear reality with it. Bear with, with it. You know. Right. It's, yeah. it, it, there's something in there, and you, and, and you, I don't, I don't think you can all ever get away with, or get, push things away, completely. There's always there's always something in that hard drive that at some point comes right. out now and then, mm. uh, and you know, we're not we're, we're not prepared we're not on our toes thinking about it because we firstly we don't think it's going to happen and when we're, we're, we want to push it away because we're better than that but it, it we, the trigger points and we mm. don't know what them trigger points right. are and they do come out right and, and we have to and, and unfortunately the closest people that we're next to actually get it not not get it but get the brunt of it right right yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I mean, it really does speak to, like, the character and the fortitude of your wife and not the women who get f who get fed up with it and, like, want it out. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with their character. I'm not saying yeah. that. But what I'm saying yeah. is not only, would, not only uh, was your wife, like, you know, helping you through your processes, but you were also gone a ton, like, like I was, like Jack was, like, and... People don't generally, most people don't get married, especially I, I think generally women, like guys get married and we're like, okay, I'm good. Like I'm married. I got, mm. like, I got my wife. I can go do my thing. But like people don't get married to be alone. And yeah. for, for a woman to like stick through that is to, tough. to be a, to be a basically a single yeah. woman through a large part yeah. of her marriage. Like it's, yeah. it, it, it's tough. And, 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 and one thing that my wife had to learn with was not tell people what I did, what I did as well. So she right. was, she had to learn how to lie a lot as well. Right. Mm. Right. Mm. Did, did she make up like a, uh, like a good job for you in terms of, like, <laughs> I mean, he's an, I IT. don't know. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, 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 I'm diving somewhere or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Pa Pasha, maybe this is the last question. What, what what how do you, and this is for my own benefit as much as anyone else how, how do you talk to your children about your military service what do you, what do you tell them i don't really talk about it to be honest i i've got a i've got i mean i'm in my man cave now so i've got all my mem memorabilia yeah. out but my my i've got two boys and they they they're not really interested mm -hmm. which which i kind of like so i don't have to potentially lie to them so i i try not to yeah, push I, I try not you to don't, you don't want to tell tell any them. stories. But having yeah. said that, yesterday my eldest son was was at school and he kind of googled me, and I was on a YouTube podcast. It was like, what what was you doing? Is that well, if you want to know, just listen to it. It's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pasha, I mean, I I don't know how old your children are, but there's there there, there there's going to come a time where, and, and I, this is presumptuous, but. You're gonna to have to tell them what you did and who you are. I, well, I would actually like to do a family, a, a book for my family. Mm -hmm. That I, I, I want to do that. I mean, because my my wife's always telling me because the stories are still there, and at some point the stories are going to go and fade and uh, and be something that at the time I'm probably making up. You know that that you think happened and right. maybe didn't. Right. But you know, if 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 I had the time uh, and the the finances potentially, I could I would actually like someone to to make me a family, my fam my a book. So when my kids potentially get old enough to want to read it, 
they can read it and or when when I've potentially gone, that's part of who what I did because no one else is going to tell them what I did. Right. Uh, and well, we not, there's not going to be any TV programs, is there? But but, but that's well, but that's be. what we're doing here, right? I mean, yeah. And, and the yeah, podcasts yeah. are gone. They're uh, we're hoping that they're the new autobiographies, right? Mm. That they're the new like personal history in 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 the you know in the historic context of. You know, obviously, there are going to be a lot of personal things that you would pass to your children and uh, details mm. and things like that that you wouldn't share with the public. But you know, hopefully, one of these days when they do get interested, yeah. they'll watch the Team House and they'll subscribe <laughs> yeah. and join our page. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no, I, I, you're on the right track. And when when you when you write that, you know, if you decide to put it in a shoebox and put it in a safety deposit box for your children, that's cool. But uh, but Jack wants the key. No, no, I do want the key. But <laughs> if if you ever decide to write that book, we'd we'd love to have you back on here to talk about it. Um, but otherwise, I mean, Pasha, thank you so much for coming here and sharing, uh, you know, a part of your story with us. Absolute pleasure. Fantastic. We deeply appreciate it. Two, two hours gone. It's flown by. Yeah, it goes by. Yeah. And uh, we will be back next Friday with a uh, crew chief uh, in the 160th Special Operations Aviation Unit. We're really excited to have him on the show. Um, Pasha, any final thoughts? Anything you want to share with us? I'm all good. I'm all, all good. right, man. Thank you, man. And you. Uh, we will see all of you guys out there next Friday. Bye, everybody.